Today we are going to cover what is subnetting or VLSM variable length subnet masking how to do that and why you need it with the examples in this examples what we will be doing is we will be calculating different subnet IDs their network mask their broadcast IDs what will be the first usable IP address and what will be the last usable IP address stay tuned those who don't know me my name is Vakas and I will be covering CCNA NP and IE please hit like and subscribe and hit the bell icon so you can be notified for the upcoming videos let's get started the first thing in subnetting is the information gathering phase in this information gathering phase there are few key questions you need to answer for example how many subnets you need what will be the range of those subnet in terms how many hosts are going to be in part of that subnet or in other words how many ip addresses you need and will one subnet fits all the requirement or no or you will be needing multiple subnets with different separate masks for example i have calculated that i will be needing 172.16.0.0 slash 16 i just made it class b to keep everything simple and it will be easier to deliver the idea what i need to do is i will convert this one into decimal format here comes the decimal format for this one and i have kept these all bits under their numerical values now if you calculate this one from binary to numerical or numerical to binary you will be easily able to identify what this number represent in decimal 0 1 means 0 means off and 1 means on in the ip address in the previous lecture we seen that it have two portions one is the network identifier and the other one is host identifier network identifier is the one which we are interested in because this will be identifying that how many bits are part of the network and how many we can use it for ip address assignment for example in i have selected 172.16.0.0/16 so it will be 16 bits will be network identity i have represented network identifier as n and host identifier as h now it's time to do our calculation in the exam you will not have access to ip subnet calculators available on the internet where you can easily do this subnetting and vlsm variations but in the exam you need to do this manually so i will take you through how you can do step by step this whole procedure manually and you can answer all the questions which comes part of the subnetting how to do this calculation is how many total number of subnets you need let's try to first calculate that one the formula is 2 into n this one will give you how many bits you need to get the subnets what you are trying to get for example we need 250 subnets what is the closest range for it if you try to take 3 bits what is the number of subnets you are going to get if you multiply it by 2 x2 x2 what you will be getting is 8 so it does not meet our requirement so you will continue keep continuing this calculation until you get the required number in our example we will need 8 bits let's try to calculate that information once we get all 8 bits 2 into 8 we will get 256 subnet how many what is the requirement for us is 250 it's absolutely fine to waste few IP addresses, waste few subnet. There is no hard and fast rule that you cannot do that. Absolutely you can. So the first part we have successfully completed. We found out that we need 8 bits to get this all subnet ID ranges. Now it is time to calculate how many host bits we will be getting. In this example, the remaining one will be 8 bits. Let's try to calculate that one. Is it meeting our requirement? The formula for total number of IP addresses is 2 into H minus 2. What is this minus 2 is? We are reducing 1 for broadcast IP address and 1 for network ID. These two will be minus from your usable IP address. In, a, in other words, it's easier to understand that the least one will be reserved for network ID and the highest one will be reserved for broadcast address. So let's try to calculate this one what we will be getting is 256 minus 2 it's gonna be 254 this is gonna be our usable ip addresses and now we know that we need 8 bits from host identifier and make it network identifier 
Remaining bits, we will use it for assignment of IP addresses. Now, since we have all the information, now let's try to calculate what will be the network IDs available for us to utilize in the network. We will be using the previous example where we have calculated that we need eight bits. We will make it now as subnet in our diagram. It will be easier to identify that these are the bits we have reserved it for network identifier from host identification portion. Now take that decimal format which we have utilized it earlier for 172.16.0.0 and let's put it here. We are not going to change the first two octets. It's gonna be same. The next octet, the third one, we will be changing it and we will flip each bit one by one and try to get all the subnets out of it until it's completely exhausted and we have the maximum value of 255. Now let's try to calculate first few and I will leave the rest for you to calculate and put it into your excel sheet. It's easier, make few columns, what will be your network ID, what will be your broadcast address, what will be your first usable IP address and what will be the last usable IP address. Once you have this whole information, it will be easier to assign it in various locations in the network. Let's convert the third octet all as switched off. And now what will be our first subnet ID we have received is 172.16.0.0 slash 24. How you got this 24? It is a subnet ID. What is a subnet ID is we have already covered in the previous lecture. Subnet ID means we are calculating the bits which are part of network identifier. So if you calculate that one, first octet, second octet and the third octet, now you have slash 24. Now let's take another example. We want the next ID also. What will be happening is we will flip all zeros to the first bit to one. And what we will be getting is 172.16.1.0 slash 24. So this is gonna be our second network ID. What will be the third one? We will flip the second one and switch off the remaining one. We have 172.16.2.0 slash 24. The same way you will continuously keep flipping one bit per time and finally you will be getting 172.16.255.0 slash 24. Now you have exhausted the complete subnet. This is how you find all the possible ranges and you will be writing it into your Excel sheet. It's time to find out what will be the subnet mask for this one. How we will calculate the subnet mask. In subnet mask, if you remember in the previous lecture, we convert all the network identifier bits into one and we have our subnet mask. In this example, first octet, second octet and third octet, all the eight bits we have converted it to one, which is means it's on. And now we have 255.255.255.0. If you want to have more details on this one, please check my previous lecture. Let's move forward to broadcast address. What will be the broadcast address? In broadcast address, what happens is we switch on all the bits of host identifier. This example is perfectly fine as far as you have subnet mask 255. Dot two five five dot two five five dot zero. If you have any other variation, for example, two five five dot two four eight dot zero dot zero, where you have a value other than two five five, the procedure is going to change. We will be looking into this procedure in the next slide. We have our example two. In this example, I change the question. Now we need twenty five subnets and we have fifty hosts per subnet. It will be a variation of the previous example, but here we are going to learn a new method to calculate few things. For example, I selected the same just to keep everything common. So we have selected 172.16.0.0 16. So let's try to calculate our first step. What was the sub first step? We need to calculate how many subnets we need and how many bits we need to acquire from host identifier to create multiple subnets. Let's try to find out. The first one we need is total number of bits. So it's gonna be two into N. Let's put 
for example 5 how many we will be getting is 32 how many we need is 25 so the first condition is complete the second one is how many ip addresses we need from this subnet it is 50 host which is minimal it's absolutely fine let's try to calculate it with the second formula which is total number of ip address is equal to 2 into h minus 2 if we calculate that one how many remaining bits are there in this one since we have already acquired five bits which is we will be taking it from host identifier and reserve it for network identifier the remaining bits is going to be network identifier minus host identifier network identifier bits are 8 first octet second octet 8 16 and the third octet we have reserved 5 bits so it's total of 21 minus 32 we will be getting our host identification portion host identifier we got it 11 bits how many ip addresses we will be getting approximately 2048 which will be minus 2 approximately 2046 now we have both of the condition completed we have the total number of subnets we know how many bits we need and we know how many ip addresses we will be getting now it is time to find out what will be the subnet ids what will be the subnet mask and what will be the broadcast address let's first try to get how many network ids are there and how to get it we will be using the same formula which we have just used it in the previous example let's use all four octet with their decimal version and their numerical values let's convert 172.16.0.0 slash 21 into decimal now we will flip the bits which are part of subnet range which we have reserved it from host identification portion for network id to 1 0 1 0 until we exhaust it and we completely get all the possible combinations of different network ids let's try to do few and i am leaving the rest for you to calculate it i want to see it let me know in the comment that if you face an issue so the first network id what we will be doing is let's put it 172.16 we have all zero we have flipped it off dot zero dot zero this is gonna be your first id with the slash 21 because we have reserved five bits from the third octet so it's total of 21 the second subnet id is going to be 172.16 and let's flip one at a time and see what we get the first one we flip is number fifth bit and we have eight so our second network id is going to be 8.0 slash 21 let's flip the another one we have 16.0 now let's flip the other one now we have 24.0 so similarly you will be getting all the possible combination until you completely exhaust all the combinations available under subnet now it's time to calculate subnet mask what was the rule for that subnet mask is flip all the bits which are part of network identifier into one and add all of them together and you should have your subnet mask let's try to do that so the first octet completely one second octet all one the third octet we have five bits which are going to be one and remaining all the bits are going to be zero let's calculate that it's going to be coming 255.255.248.0 this is going to be your subnet mask once you have this subnet mask it's time to calculate what will be the first usable ip address and the last usable ip address what will be the broadcast address for that specific subnet range let's calculate for at least three to four i want you to understand this concept it's very important so let's calculate for the first one 172.16.0.0 slash 21 what will be our first usable ip address is going to be 172.16.0.1 and what will be the final IP address which will be like maximum IP address you can assign versus it's gonna be 172.16.7.254 255 is a broadcast address let's try to calculate in the decimal format 
So what I did is I flipped all the bits of host identifier into one and we found out that it's going to be 7.255. This is going to be my broadcast address and the last usable IP address will be 254. Now let's calculate the broadcast address. Remember the rule whenever the mask is discontinuous, the value of any of the octet includes other than 255 or 0. This rule is applicable. In our previous slide, we have already calculated network IDs and subnet masks. Let's take those IDs and find out what will be the broadcast address. And we can also use the same formula to find out what will be the last usable IP address. Our first network ID is 172.16.0.0/21 subnet pass 255.255.248.0. Let's take the discontinuous octet, which is the third octet, 248. Minus it from 256. So 256 minus 248, we have total of 8 bits, which is the difference. Now look into the third octet, which is currently 0. You have to find a value which is the multiple of the bits, which is the difference, and closest to the current value. In third octet, the value is 0 and the difference of the bits is 8. If we take the multiple of 8, 8 is higher than 0 and it is closest to 0. Now minus it with 1 and you have your third octet value 172.16.7 and the last host identification portion we are going to leave all as 255. What will be our broadcast address will be 172.16.7.255. This is going to be our broadcast address. If we want to find out the last usable IP address, we will just minus it from the broadcast address and we will have our last usable IP address. 172.16.7.254 is going to be last usable IP address from this network ID. Let's take the second network ID. It's 172.16.8.0 slash 21. What is our current difference bits? The third octet is 8. We have already calculated it. What is the closest value to the 8 but higher than this one? If we take the 8, it's equal. So what is the next multiple of 8 is 16 minus 1. Now this is going to be our last usable IP address as well as broadcast address. 172.16.15.255. This is going to be our broadcast address. Last usable IP address is 172.16.15.255. 254. This is going to be the last usable IP address from this network ID. Let's take the next network ID 172.16.24.0/21. We have already identified the difference of bits is 8. What is the closest value to 24 but higher than this one? In multiple of the difference of the bits. 8 plus 8 16 plus 8 24 we are equal. We need the higher value but closest to our current third octet. So 24 plus 8 is 32. 32 minus 1 is 31. This is going to be our third octet value. 172.16.31.255 is going to be our broadcast address. And minus 1 is going to be our last usable IP address. 172.16.31.254. Hope this calculation is clear. We have already seen when the mask is continuous, how to calculate the broadcast address and when it is discontinuous in our example, how to calculate this. This formula is very easy to remember and it works for me always. Now you have to practice one, two times and it should be okay. If I have increased your knowledge in any ways, please hit like and subscribe and hit the bell icon so you can be notified for the upcoming videos. I will see you in the next lecture. Thank you so much. Take care.